Hello, welcome back to the channel, ladies and gents. How you doing? We're going full spoilers now for my season two, episode seven review of The Mandalorian. This is the pre-penultimate episode. Yeah. Um, full spoilers again. Got to say, full spoilers ahead for this. Really enjoyed this episode. It was uh, directed by uh, Rick. Can't, I'm going to butcher his last name, so I'm not going to try. And I really enjoyed it. It was a good episode, strong. Um, but I think, unfortunately, this was the first episode I've watched of this where I now hear the complaints, right? So the complaints of people are, the ones that don't like this, are, oh, it's always the same man. Bear in mind, I really like the show. It's always the same Mando has to go to a planet to do some stuff, to get some stuff, to then progress the story, right? And it has been that. But it's never felt like that until this episode. And I don't know why it felt like that this episode. Um, and it's not even a major gripe. It's just an observation of, oh, I can kind of see it now. But it wasn't a major gripe. Um, my major gripe, actually, was narratively. Was with, like, certain character actions. And Boba Fett's spray-painted up armour. I think... Nah. Nah. I don't like the fact that he spray painted it. And I don't know why either. But I just think it looks crap. <laughs> it looks like someone made cosplay out of it. And I don't like it. I think it's bad. And I don't know. And again, like, it's just an aesthetic thing. But I'm not used to seeing Boba Fett's armour all nice and crisp and clean. So I didn't really like it when I... When I you know, when, it, when he first saw it, it looks like plastic, basically. It looks like cosplay. And not a good one either. So yeah, I don't, I don't know why they chose to do that. It does seem a bit silly. Because logic dictates that they literally took off. They went straight over uh, to see Cara Dune. And then they've come back to the new, you know, the planet that they've been on now. Like, when did he have the time? I don't know. It just seems a bit silly. So whatever. Anyway, narratively speaking, what happened in this episode? Well, it was a good episode. Um, they, they had to go pick up... Um, is it Bill Burr? Is that his name? Can't remember the guy's name. I think it is Bill Burr. I had to go pick up his character that we've already seen uh, in season one. Go get him because he knows Imperial Codes. To then go to, and also where to go anyway, to get to an Imperial base to find. So this is that whole, I've got to go here to go there to do this to progress the story. Which I did feel it a little bit in this episode. Uh, to then go get the coordinates to Moff Gideon, right? Now, it, it was good, and it was quite touching as well in parts, because we see a completely different side of the Empire in this episode. Um, and, yeah, it was fascinating to see. It was really well done. So, basically, they land on this planet. Boba Fett's ship, by the way, awesome. We see inside Boba Fett's ship, and it all moves and rotates. I really liked that. I thought that was great. Um, and then they head to this planet. So they go to the planet, they've got to go on, infiltrate this top secret base uh, to use a terminal. That's basically the story. That is it. That's the story. It's quite basic. Um, great action. They, they they jump in these like weird vehicles, which are trans transport vehicles that are transporting this uh, Rydian or something like that. I can't remember the name. Uh, but it's highly, highly explosive. Shaking it around will blow it up and it will just go boom. Um, and uh, Mando has to be the one to accompany him, but he obviously can't wear his armor, so he, he changes his dress code and dons some stormtrooper armor, which obviously leads to uh, an episode where he takes his helmet off. Um, it's not too jarring with his helmet off either, actually. The voice works in a helmet or off the helmet. It actually works. It's the same voice. It works really, really well. But anyway, when they're in this transport vehicle and they, they make it through... You know, they, they make it on their journey, they make it through, and they get into the base. You see all these people saluting them. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. And it's a different side to the Empire that we haven't actually seen before. And I thought that was really intriguing. And, um, yeah, it was really, really intriguing, actually. Now, what happens from there, and I am going to have to get the... Um, I'm going to have to get the... Uh, the sort of old IMDB up. So what happens from there is they go into the base and uh, Bill Burr's character is like, yep, I'm going to go get, go to that, you know, that, that 
little station there and I'm going to go get these codes. Then he sees an officer, because uh, it's in the officer's mess, he sees an officer that he served with and he's like, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. And I was like, hmm, bit lame, you would do it, but all right. Um, I, I get that they probably wouldn't, but it's still, like, it was a bit annoying because it was just, you know, messing about. Jasper's here, how's it going, boy? Um, so, so then Mando does it and he has to take his helmet off. Now, the actor that did that is the guy who's in, um, like, 13, I think it is. Uh, he's, in, he's in quite a few few things. He's a great actor, and he's not in more things, but he's absolutely fantastic. He needs to be in more stuff. Really, really good actor. Really, really good. And it leads to this really tense sort of, I guess, like inquisition between this officer, Mando, and... Uh, Bill Burr's character. I hope I'm saying that name right. Because if I've been saying the wrong name all this time. Oh, people are going to be annoyed. All ten of you that watch these reviews. And and it was a fascinating exchange. Because they sat at this table. And this officer is saying, oh, you know, it's for the greater good. They all want order. And I was like, they're teasing the first order. They're teasing the first order. But they didn't, which was good. I think they are teasing the first order, but they didn't say it. And that, that's the best way to tease that. Just to actually tease it, not out and out say it. But then they obviously say what the explosive chemical is for. And uh, it turns out it's for uh, it, it will lead to an absolute destruction similar to uh, this Bill Burr character. You know, his troops that he served with under this officer. Similar destruction and death that would uh, occur, basically. And he just loses it. And he just shoots them all. And then obviously they have to escape. And they do escape and they all save the day. And because of that really kind act, they let that guy go. And yeah, it's all good. Um, but I thought that was a fascinating exchange. And it showed a real human side to the Empire, which is very human. And they tried to do that, right? They tried to do that with uh, the new sequel trilogy. They tried to do it there with Finn. But they didn't, they didn't do it quite right. And it's amazing how this... 30 odd minute episode can still do it better just in that little exchange you know it still give more humanity than uh, than a whole trilogy of bloody movies i just thought that was really really good and then obviously we close oh, such a good line uh, mando sending a communication through to moff gideon using the exact same lines he did somewhat different but basically the same lines he did to mando to get the child off him Obviously, he's asking for the child back. He's like, yeah, you, that means more to me than you can know, blah, blah, blah. Basically, I'm coming for you, basically. Awesome. So good. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. So anyway, there's. I just really like this. I really like this episode. It was very good. Some of the narrative stuff was a bit dumb. The, it was very, very blatant now that they are just sort of winding it around. And I feel like they could have done more. And this pertains to a recent video I did on The Mandalorian, which a lot of people said I took words out of context. I never did. Uh, it's the interview with Robert Rodriguez. If you think I took words out of context, you're an idiot. You didn't watch the video. Because um, I quite literally say in the video, he is, he is singing John Favreau's praises. Nothing was removed from context. But here's the problem, and this is what I was highlighting in that video, is that if you give people tiny, tiny scripts and you rely on them to fill it up, you aren't taking the necessary care and attention to the franchise. And it does lead to episodes like this. Even that great episode last time with Boba Fett turning up, right? Which is a fantastic episode. Did result in some real dumb slapstick moves that people did get tired with. And it was the shortest episode. And the same with this one as well. Like I can't help but feel like some of this stuff could have been a bit more thought out and a bit more expanded upon in the script phase. Uh, that's what I was alluding to, basically. And I, and I feel like this one showed that as well. But it still had fantastic direction. It was still a really good episode. Don't paint Boba Fett's armour though. No, I don't understand that. So anyway, not much else to report to be honest. I'm looking forward to the season finale next week. Uh, I do, as always, continue to enjoy this show. So if you're new here, please do hit subscribe. Uh, give the video a like and a share. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.